Yeah? What are you looking at? Wait. You look like a capable sort. I might have a job for someone. Capable. Poor gnome. His daughter was kidnapped by Conover's thieves. Whatever they have in store for her, it won't be pretty. Ah, not just a thief, but a slaver. Scum of the worst kind. They say he used to be in the Candrian Guard, but got fed up and deserted. Took up robbing, and worse, slaving, gathering Candrian's worst thieves and rogues under his command. I've been a member of the Candrian Guard for several years. We used to patrol all of Candrian, but now his lordship has mostly confined us to his keep and Melaglir. The old poltroon has forbidden the guard to deploy beyond Melaglir. We disobeyed orders to march this far. Most folk believe he's doing what's best for the town, but not me. I can't sit idly by and do nothing. He can take my head if he wants it. Not like I get to use it much anymore. We set out, against orders, mind you, from Melaglir to put down this nasty brigand named Conover. Found him, and his followers too, but there were more of them than we expected. The few of my unit left alive only barely escaped. If you could finish Conover, I can pay you. Great. Head south to the Fiend's camp. It's huge. Lousy with every rogue and thief in the region. Shouldn't be hard to locate. Report to me when Conover's dead, and I'll see that you're rewarded. I need your help, please. My daughter, Julia, has been kidnapped by bandits. Those animals left me for dead and took her. I'm a tinker for fate's sake. What kind of savages attack a tinker? Julia is the only family I have left. Will you help me? Most gnomes favor the bustling city life of Adessa. Not me. Oh, no, sir. Ever since I was a young boy, the open road beckoned. So I've walked the roads of Erethel, Dalantarth, and Detir for 40 years, selling my services to anyone who can pay. Lately, though, it seems the world is growing more dangerous, worse than it's ever been, at least for as long as I can remember. Her mother passed away when Julia was young. I've done my best, but sometimes I think she takes care of me more than I take care of her. I've been teaching her the tinker trade, but I'm not sure life on the road suits her. Oh. Worthless bunch of clods. They attacked the bandits head on and got themselves slaughtered. Crawled back here to lick their wounds. Whatever you do, stay away from that cursed place. With bandits to the west and Tuatha raiders to the north, the village already had its fair share of trouble. Now I hear tell of people vanishing in the night. Whatever's happening there, it can't be good. The bandits here are fierce, led by one called Conovar. He attacked us in broad daylight when we were trying to leave this place. I've lived my whole life on these roads. I know full well that the price of travel is a bit of coin in the pocket of the local thugs. But these fiends took my daughter. I'll pay anything I have to get her back. Will you find her? Thank you. I heard Conover tell his men to put her with the rest of the lot before selling them. For fate's sake, hurry! I hope you fare better than those Candrian guard clowns. Most of them didn't last long enough to see the bandit camp. I want my daughter back. I'll pay you with all the gold I have. If it were me, I'd steer clear of Conovar himself at all costs. Those animals took her to a camp to the south. Be careful. They're a rough-looking lot. I'd suggest you to use diplomacy, but from the looks of you, I suspect you speak a different language. Whatever it takes, I don't care. Get me my daughter back and I'll reward you as best I can. He's the best tinkerer there is. Everywhere we go, people know him and line up to give him work. But father never likes to stay in one place for long. I can always spot the faraway look he gets when he's ready to move on. Father has been teaching me to be a tinker, but I can't seem to get the hang of it. I think I'd like to be a scholar. 
Whenever we stop in Edessa, father has to practically drag me out of the livrarium. Creepy town. People disappearing in the night. Father insisted that we leave right away. It was awful. They were going to sell me to the Tuatha and send me to some place called the Keening. I've got to get back to father. I'm returning to my father. You should talk to him too. I'm sure he'll reward you. I don't know much, only that it's where the Tuatha were going to send us. I don't imagine it's a place I'd want to go. Conover's dead. I can't believe it. That'll show Lord Kendrian. If his lordships had his way, we'd be wearing a rut around Meleglia shouting, Hey, stop that over the pikes while this villain bled us to death. You've earned this. Spend it well. The people of Meleglia hide in their village, hoping the war will just pass them by. Fine for them, as long as they don't think too much about the people that can't hide under some lord's skirts. Oh, Julia's back. You did it! I can't thank you enough, stranger. Of course, any amount is insufficient to express my thanks, but please take this gold in payment. We'll be on our way then. Travel safely. On a darkling wind she rose, gripped within impassioned throes. And I, her chosen witness, proud, did fall beneath her endless shroud. Something about you reminded me of the verse. Of course, the poet was discussing death. I am Patrick Morcan. How may I be of assistance? That is why you are here, no? Death has come to Melaglia, and you are but a step behind her. Pardon me. Grief tends to push me toward theatrics. You see, my wife was among the first of our villagers to disappear. But we are a private people, and we prefer to keep our dead exactly where they lie, good and buried. I will speak no more of it. Between the Tuatha invading in the east and the bandits marauding in the west, it seems that death is making her home of Candrian. Two score and eleven years I've called this place my home. It was once a peaceful town. But lately, peace seems to be in short supply. Do you wish to know of me? I once owned a shop where I sold trinkets to passers-by. Then my wife was taken. Now I spend my days in the Raven, watching people, waiting to die. Ah, her. A particularly belligerent woman, if I recall. I believe she left our village recently for parts unknown. Master Dace made quite the fuss. Apparently, she left her possessions in a footlocker in her room. I suppose she left in a hurry. Me? How would I possibly know? So let me guess. Bored and looking for something interesting, right? What do I know of war? I've got my own struggles to overcome. I wish the Alpha victory, but it's not as if I will see any gain from their triumphs. Ha! Melaglia. There are Tuatha about. The local lord cowers in his keep and seeds of unrest everywhere. Take me with you when you leave, will you? I'm a healer. Been stuck here for what seems like an eternity. I've been mending bones and curing sicknesses in exchange for farmers' foodstuffs. You're not from around here, are you? I am Eli Thames, and I could use your help with a delicate task. Why, I am but a humble agent of change, endeavoring to be in the right place at the right time. Candrian was once the safest region in all of Erethel. No one dared to challenge the Candrian Guard. Now, with the Tuatha raiding up and down the coast, the Guard do nothing but protect Lord Candrian as he cowers in his keep. Inri Candrian became Lord just before the Crystal War began. When the Tuatha invaded, he retreated to his keep and refused to come out. Left all Candrian to die just to save himself and his precious family name. Rathir is the great city of the Dokalfar, up the coast a ways. It's old and beautiful, but don't hold a candle to Odessa if you ask me. I'd heard it was a quiet town, but now I hear whispers of people mysteriously disappearing during the night. I haven't left the inn since I arrived, 
Lord Candrian wears a large ceremonial signet ring. He removes it only to sleep. I need you to go to Candrian Keep and steal it. Ever since Indre Candrian became Lord, the Candrian Guard have not left the area around his keep. The Tuathar are raiding the Candrian coast entirely unchecked, and this gravely worries the citizens of Rathir. We wish to inspire Lord Candrian to leave his keep and drive the Tuatha back into the sea, and the ring is the first step. Excellent. I'm told that Lord Candrian keeps it in his bedroom in Candrian Keep. Obtain the ring and return to me for another task. The keep is in the southeast corner of Candrian. Supposed to be impenetrable when it's sealed, but I've heard rumors that one could sneak inside through a cavern below it. Hello. What may Durand Alagas do for you? Trading goods in Meleglir is just a necessity for me. I've always wanted to travel and study the esoteric elements of alchemy. But alas, where can one find time for such pursuits? This land is old, my friend. Old indeed. Used to be that the Lords of the Alphar ruled over much of the Arathel from the keep to the east of here. But time brings change, I suppose. Now it's just the keep and this village. Meleglir was never a particularly bustling town, but with the recent disappearances and the Twatharades nearby, few visitors come here anymore. It makes me sad. Ah, good, you got the ring. With this. We're one step closer to forcing Lord Candrian out of his keep and unshackling the Candrian guard to challenge the Tuatha. Durant runs the general store here in Meleglir. He's a bit off, but he's said to have a singular knowledge of the arcane. We need to modify the ring before we return it to Lord Candrian. There is an altar in Western Candrian that is perfect for our needs. Take the ring there and place it on the altar. There may be some resistance to your efforts. Just ensure nothing disturbs the ring until it's finished. Return to me when you're done. We must modify Lord Candrian's signet ring with a bit of magic. Take the ring to Western Candrian and place it on the altar. You may have to defend the ring until it's finished. There could be some resistance. Greetings, visitor. What can I do for you? Aye, I remember Mistress Fell stayed with us not too long ago, asking questions about the disappearances. Departed in a hurry, paid up, but left her possessions behind in a chest upstairs. Mel Aglir would be nothing but a cinder too, if we weren't a quick march from Lord Candrian's keep. I suppose his lordship could live with letting his people die, but not if he could hear them screaming while it happened. Let me know if you discover what happened to her. I hope she's all right. Been running the inn here in Melaglia all my life. My father was proprietor before me and his father before him. Used to be we could count on travelers passing through here every week, but now we're lucky to have any visitors at all. Impressive. The altar put quite a nasty curse on that ring. Restore it to its proper place. Be sure you're not seen. The keep guards have been on high alert since the ring went missing. With Indre Candrian dead, Arian Rhydarn is sure to become the new lord. He will drive the two other off our shores once and for all. Don't worry, it will be painless. Once he's worn the ring and retires for the night, he'll sleep and simply never wake again. What did you think we were doing? Honestly, have you ever heard tell of a curse that could forge a brave man from a coward? This is the only way. Good. You'll need to find a different way in this time. Since your last visit, they've sealed the front door and barred all visitors. Remember... Place the ring back where you found it without anyone noticing. Hopefully, Candrian will just think he overlooked it. He is Lord Indre Candrian's nephew, the son of Indre's sister, and a Losalfar trader. 
Thankfully, he spent his childhood in the north with his father's people. It was only recently that his parents passed away, and he was sent here to come age under the influence of Lord Candrian. Restore the cursed ring to its proper place. Be sure you're not seen. The keep guards have been on high alert since the ring went missing. Ah, there you are. Have you heard the news? Poor old Lord Candrian passed away in his sleep. Very sad. Yes. You'll be happy to hear that Arian Rydarn is the new Lord Candrian. Incidentally, I believe this belongs to you. Careless of you to have left it behind. But I hope we can work together again sometime. The Losulfar are an honorable people, and you can easily see that they raised Arian to be a just and virtuous leader. With Arian in charge of the Candrian Guard, they will take the fight to the Tuatha and drive them back across the sea. Indre Candrian was a poor lord. It is better that he is gone. Now, perhaps, the Guard can drive the Tuatha back across the sea and make this land safe again. The deep slumber predicted your coming, as it did many things about you. You were meant to find the staves, to reforge them, and ultimately to keep them. Those of my kind do not flinch from the winter, but the nights grow exceptionally cold and the air holds the stench of decay. Mortals, it seems, will outlast us all. Take the staffs, wield them. They have called you as they once called down the lightning and lit the earth with fire. Do not lose heart on your perilous journey. You've come to Nareen Farm, what's left of it, that is. Here we are after years away and it's as if, well, as if the Earth's forgotten us. Look at it, laid out before you. How many nights that we've been lonesome wanderers have I dreamed of seeing this again? And now, at last, we've returned. Me and Arik here have come back to farm our land. We've been many years away, endured many a trial and hardship to return. Without some kind of miracle, it's no farm at all. Mind you, I'm well aware that's just how Tyran's Rest wants it. Oh, he's a bit quiet, I know, but he's the man for me. Wouldn't have no other. That, or it's forgotten how to be a farm, will have no choice but to leave, unless some miracle comes and... My Arik dear, we'd clean forgot the Paling Wand. Oh, but it's deep in the hollow, and the Adaris Hollow's not safe, not safe at all. Well, if the stories are true, Arik's granddad used it to tame this high land and make crops grow. He'd always say how he had to return it to the hollow, so the hollow's magic could fill it up again. Our seeds don't take, or they turn into other plants. The weeds grow monstrous, and the tilled earth wanders out of planted rows. It's hopeless. You would? There are all sorts of wild fay in there. Oh, but that wand would save us. Adaris hollows due south, just below the bluff. If you can bring the wand to us, I don't know how we'll thank you. Let us hope it is, or we'll have no choice but to leave once more. Well, you'll find the hollow due south, and the slope down from the bluff. I saw you speaking with the vagrants on Beggar's Bluff. What lies have they told you? Why have you come this way? You must not. Lyria has cast them out. The very fact that they must debase our blessed valley with Fae's sorcery proves it. Instead, you should bring the wand to me. Priestess Lorella will destroy it, and that will be an end to that. They will be forced to go. Those heights across the Vale went by another name, before the war. Now, because of the filthy refugees who wander in from the Western Plains, we call it Beggar's Bluff. Galifor has been sanctified and blessed by Lyria. Those who weathered her wrath unscathed are blessed as well. I will not deny the Nareens lived here once. I even played with Arak as a girl, but they have no place here anymore. Lyria did not shield them from the Tuatha. It was against her will that they remain. We are truly blessed that she is here to lead us. I'm fortunate she holds me in her closest confidence. Only to see those vagrants leave our land peacefully, nothing more. 
Fear not, you will be rewarded with gold as well as Lyria's grace. Please, can't you help? I need someone to travel to the Tewili coast. It's my daughter. I'm a merchant originally of Culm, and I have seen my share of grief. The village stood alone along the Tewili coast, overlooking the sea. It was one of the first places to fall when the Tuatha invaded. Culm has been abandoned for years, and it's a place best forgotten. Anella was determined to rebuild it, though. This is my adopted home. The people have been good to me here. But there is no use talking to them of certain things. I gave up trying long ago. It's the land that lies along the western edge of the Forian Strait. The coast bore the brunt of the Tuatha invasion ten years ago. Anala led a group of refugees to the town of Kuln. I warned her not to go, but she's always been a strong-willed girl. I should have heard from her by now, and the caravanners say that bands of Tuatha have landed on the coast. If anything happened to Anella, I don't know what I'd do. Please, help me. It's been ten years since we drove the Tuatha from these lands, and still the refugees are living in tents on the Forsaken Plain. They've talked of resettling Kuln. Anella took up their cause and agreed to lead them there. You will? At last! Mitharu bless you, friend! Anella led the refugees to the ruins of Kuln on the Tewili coast. Look for her there. If she's hurt, Bring her back safely. If she's dead... I know what Kuln meant to her. She was just a child when we fled. But this... This is folly. The ruins lie south of Rathia and the old battleground. If there's trouble, the settlers may have hidden. Possibly in the village. I see I have you to thank. You and my clever hiding place. Can't imagine what those churls were after. They kept barking on about the war sworn this and kill me that. But now tell me, what can I do to repay you? A brief lesson in the art of locks, perhaps? One of my finest ideas. I built it precisely for times like these. You have done me a good turn, war sworn. Therefore, I am more than happy to share some of my considerable wisdom in the art of locks with you. Louts and fools! I could see they wanted blood, so I dove for my hiding place. And not a moment too soon. What? Do you mean it didn't work? Ah, this is one of my greatest achievements. I recreated that ancient marvel perfectly. I promised that pledge shield. Uh, Fenin. Fenin, that was her name. I, I promised her. Surely she had permission, yes? She swore to me. Oh... I see. The original? Truly an ancient wonder. Surely the combined work of war-sworn craftsmen and luminaries of the Scully Arcana. For Pledge Shield Fennin, yes. Welcome to Brad and Sergren. What brings the likes of you to our peaceful little town? If it's straight, Atheof and I are more than happy to have your business. My business partner, poor fellow. He's lost so much to the coast. Now his own daughter's gone back there. It'd be a risky venture to say it will end well. Just an old merchant, enjoying a comfortable life in the countryside, although trade has been rather slow lately. Trade is good. Not what you'll find in Rathir, to be sure. But please, have a look for yourself. We buried our things during the war. I left something I love, but with all the danger there, I won't go wading back. The priestess is quite a boon to our community. I don't know if we'd be so prosperous without her guidance. Oh yes, Lyria's blessing, our priestess calls it. We have good trade, good health. No violence, no crime. Why, not a soul's been thrown in the... Ah, Gwastel, you old fool. You never did know when to keep your mouth shut. There's a prisoner in the jail. Uh, not a mortal. 
But Aurella and White Nil said it was right, and it's not as if they see things as we do anyway. He might be happy there. Only please, don't breathe a word of this to anyone. I told you, he's in the jail, in Burin Cove. Go see for yourself if you must. Just don't tell anyone I had anything to do with it. Well, did you find the Fey Wand? Tell me! I am certain Lyria is greatly pleased with you. Our village surely is. You have earned this reward. Use it in good health. Welcome to the Reed Song Inn. Come in and Lyria light your way. If you can spare a coin for our troops in the war, well then, all the better. Our goddess and protector, the Alphar's guiding light, it was her will we were spared the Fey Sword ten years back. As long as you're not a sodding Fey, you're most welcome here. High Priestess Tyrion made camp right here on her sojourn to settle Rathir. It is said she was given a vision by Lyria on this very ground. I hear the conditions in Cluricon are just wretched. My own son was there, gave his life for the cause. That's why I've taken up collection. Every coin goes to those poor soldiers across the water. That I do. We all must do our part. Have you got a few coin to spare, then? And what about them? I don't see what they're doing to fight the Fae. There's a good soul. Say, would you do one more favor for an old innkeep? This purse is full of collections. Would you be so good as to bring it to the box in our sanctuary? I can't go myself, and there's someone I can't trust. If you want to know the truth of it, someone's been swiping from the collections. We don't know who, but I'm sure you weren't the one. Lyria, bless your fate. Sanctuary's just across the bridge at the end of the walk. The box is inside. And if you happen upon the thief, and in my opinion it must take place in the darkest night, tell the priestess to white nil at once. The sanctuaries cross the bridge and down the path. The box is inside. You can't miss it. And keep your eyes sharp. A little thief has been taken from that box. Sometime in the dead of night, I imagine. Here's a valiant adventurer come to sleepy Tyrion's rest. The war cheer you up and spit you out too. If not, it will. And you'll find yourself in some damn tavern, rotting behind a mug of ale. Just a sorry old remnant of the war. Not sorrier than those damn refugees, the poor sots. That's not the talk of them in this village. Lyria doesn't love them, or so I've heard. And she's not the only one. The war? Ha! The war's a grislier beast than these poor fools have dreamt of. It's a fine hill, if you like to sit and rot in your old age. That or praise Lyria's toes morn, noon, and night. Aurella will destroy the wand in magical fire. Like those wretches, the stain will be cleansed from our land. What other god or goddess holds magic, mystery, and fate in her hands? None. You would be wise to seek her favor. Yes, sadly. We can't figure out who, but everyone agrees. It must take place late at night, when all are asleep. You are not Dill the White, nor the Priestess. Have you come to laugh? Or to beg me for oracles? It was he and the priestess who put me here. He returns from time to time to sputter and gloat with his scarred thoughts. They brought me here to know the future, wanting riches, wanting luck. When I could give them none of those things, they spat and called me Tuatha and left. She saps the power from my limbs and uses it for her own. She is as the cypress, standing tall in a calm, yet bending in the slightest breeze. Nothing at all. I sit in reverie. I cannot stretch beyond the confines of this circle. Because the priestess and Nil the White put me here, and I cannot leave. 
It is a prison of powerful magic. The magic of the children of dust. Magic that is strange to me. Yes, more than anything. But as you see, I cannot. There is the gate which Nil the White can unlock with his key. And there is the circle, my true prison, which can be broken by words only the priestess herself knows. I'd like to know just what you've been doing in there. On second thought, no. I'm much happier not knowing. Fine day to you. It's what we've got for a prison here. Common sails off that way. They don't get much use. Hardly none at all. Then there's, well, there's what lies beyond this door. Which is neither for you nor I to go poking about in. I'm paid to guard this cove, and that's what I do. No one enters, no one leaves. None but the good priestess, or old white nil. Not much I can tell you about the good priestess. For one, I'm not sure she can't hear us even now. Her power covers this town, and she coddles it like a newborn child, smothers it sometimes, if you ask me. He's the priestess's old watchdog, that's what he is, and my commander. She says bark, he barks, bite, he bites. He keeps me and the militia orderly, and sits on his bench, that's all. I imagine it's a fine enough village, if you don't mind some going on about Lyria. And you're not a refugee. Go in there and see for your damn self. I won't stop you. Greetings, traveler. I am the mayor of this village, its priestess, and its guiding light. Now tell me, child, are you also a follower of the goddess Lyria? Then you are most welcome here to the village of Tyran's Rest. If you seek healing, I can aid you. The doors of our inn. Trader, locksmith, and sanctuary are all gladly open to the weary visitor. When the war brought Fay to our doors, there was but one righteous Almain, our own Atheof. That is why we welcomed him and his willful daughter to our home. You may visit its ruins on the coast. They are a testament to what befall all who displease my Lady of Fate. Atheof's daughter, and the others who went to resettle there, showed great ignorance as to the finality of her will. By my lady Lyria's grace, I have the power to heal and to cure. Why, Lyria is the goddess of magic and of all good, Alfar. Those who love and cleave to her will prosper, as we have done. In the ten years since war swept across these plains, I have guided this village by Lyria's light and by the wisdom of her teachings. I was a humble student of faith when I heard the call. It was so keen and clear. I left the temple that day to serve my people as I could. We must do what we can for our Alpha soldiers across the water. Mayra, our innkeep, takes donations for the cause. Our village is a lesson in Lyria's blessings. Take the two villages, Tyrin's Rest and Culm. When the Tuatha struck this land, which stood strong? That which loved Lyria most. I am sure I don't know what you are speaking of. Do what? Are you accusing a daughter of Lyria of... of... Do you know who I am? If you persist in speaking nonsense, I will ask you to leave Tyran's Rest. Not a refugee, are you? Don't look it. No Fey, no refugees, not in Tyran's Rest. Tuatha, summer, winter, it makes no difference. They're no friend of mortal kind. What do you expect of a thing with no grasp of morality or honor or death? The priestess guides and I guard. She lights the path, and I keep a sharp eye for those that stray. They'd have done well to lead a pious life before the war. They think they can come crawling here for a second chance. But it's too late. 
The wheat has been parted from the chaff. There is nothing for them but to accept their fate as Lyria dealt it. I fought in Galafor Plain and the War of Paris. Took a wound in Oriator's Lance. I serve my time, serve with honor. I fought in the war, but Priestess Corillon is my general now. Without her guidance, every one of us will be huddled in tents like refugees. I see. It's not pretty, but it had to be done. If you'd seen all that I have, those creatures are a menace. All Fey are the same. They look harmless enough, but what they are is a threat to all Alpha. You're headed to Cloricon, then? And you wish to see what you're up against? This one is the summer variety, but it is no less dangerous. Take this key and try to be discreet. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost didn't notice you. I'm making remarkable progress in my research. You see, I'm writing the definitive biography on General Oriator. I come from the far north. Although we are farther from the action, a war against the Alpha is a war against us all. The veteran? He has lapsed into drunkenness. He's of no use to my research, or any other way besides. Without his courage and tactical brilliance, we'd never have driven the Tuatha from the plains. He and General Varlane are why I've come here. To comb the old battlefields for clues of what happened. You might say she was the moon to Oriator's son. Oh, I know some would take offense to my saying that. All the same, it's true. The first was the Battle of Galifor Plain, then... Oh, don't get me started. Well, the Battle of Galifor Plain was the first triumph pinned to Oriator's name. Then into Willy, the Dawn March, the War of Paris, Varlane's Gambit, and finally, Oriator's Stand. He died driving the Tuatha from Erethel. You shouldn't think all Losulfar are so devoted to Lyria. Where I come from, in the north, we take a much more balanced view. Ah, my powers return. Benevolent child of dust, accept this gift. Find me among Hill and Dale. If you are hurt, I will heal you. First, I must leave this cave a little while, mortal, and renew myself with the land. I have not yet made up my mind what turn of seasons are due to him. I do not think they will be mild. The spell is cut like the tree's deep root. What power she took from me have ceased to flow. What are you doing here? I'm just here for a midnight prayer. Ah, what's the use? You've caught me. Yes, I was stealing from the till. It's not as if those doomed sods off in Chloricon need this gold. Not half as much as where I'm putting it. Not in to drink, if that's what you're thinking. I, uh... There's some wretches off in Forsaken Plain. They don't know it's me. Nobody does. But I leave gold for them when I can, down by Snowmelt. Bloody least I can do. No? Well, it's good to see someone who's got a heart for a change. If I was stealing for drink, they might give me a scolding. If they knew it was for Forsaken Plain's refugees... They'd toss me in jail. There's Tyrion's rest for you. You look like you've been in some tight spots. There's a bounty out on a damn set of deserters. What do you say? A fact of life. There are cowards and lying rogues, and that's that. But when they up and run with things of value, that's another thing altogether. Haven't you been? You can feel something in you begin to rot the moment you set foot over there. At least I did. I did five years in Cluricon. Then I got this post back here, seeing fresh recruits trained and off to war. You're sure there are Tuatha here in Tuili? 
It has happened before. Maybe they'll meet some of my good-for-nothing runaways and give them a thrashing. Look at it. Scarred and singed as a blacksmith's hand. That is what you get from war. Five full crew of fresh recruits had the gall to get fully equipped on our gold coin before they up and ran. The turn tails, arms, and armor we can do without. But I'm afraid we also gave each crew a bottle of bog staunch. That's what I need recovered. Cure for a sickness that strikes some the moment they enter Cluricon. Devilish hard to make. We can't have fool deserters running off with any. I thought you looked the sort. The fools are run off down the coast. They'll be hiding here and there where they can, I imagine. There's... There are things in the air in Cluricon. It doesn't strike everyone, but some get awfully sick their first days there. Bog Staunch gets them through it, so we pack a jug with every crew we send over there. They'll be up and down the Tawilly coast, I think, hiding where they damn well can. Did you think the whole army was across the water in Chloricon? No, I'm afraid some of us are stuck here in Dolde Arn and Rathia. Used to belong to House Arn, but that soft sot that inherited wanted nothing to do with it. His loss the army's gain. The free men are a rogue group of our own soldiers who have grown disenfranchised by the war and decided it's easier to cause trouble at home than to keep the Tuatha at bay. I know they're as cooped up there as we are here, but someday that siege will lift. I want to be there when it does. No one's quite sure why Sully rebelled against us. A lot of the soldiers are feeling fatigued, though, after fighting for so long. That's why most join with free men. While it's true we Alpha lead, many humans proudly fill our ranks. All mortals unite against the damned Tuatha Fae. What am I going to do? I've got to be going, but I can't. And I can't go back to Dove Arn, but I must. I am the rightful heir to Dove Arn. Or I was, at any rate. I've spent the last few years in lovely old Rathir, pretending like a fool nothing would change. It was my home. That was before I deeded it to the Alfar army and went to Rathir with my pocket full of gold. It went ten years untouched by the Tuatha foe. That's common knowledge. Ten years stuck in a cold stone prison was how I saw it. Nothing like it anywhere in Amalur, I promise you. Beauty, elegance, wisdom. There's no putting it to words, really. Honestly, I feel like a hare hunted by hawks out here. The war, my friend. The war. I've been called. The truth is, I should have been gone days ago. Only I'd be far more eager for the adventure if I had my family arms with me. They're in there, Dove Arn. Ancestral staff and talisman. What any self-respecting Arns worn to battle since time immemorial. If I hadn't left them somewhere in that damned tower, I'd be wearing them now. I'm not supposed to be here. I ought to have shipped out days ago. That's what I've been trying to say. I need, well, want, to get my family arms and slip off before anyone knows I was here. Only, how? You're serious, aren't you? Well, with any luck... The old staff and talisman are still in one piece back there, though I have my doubts. I'd pay just to know if they are or not. Thing is, Dove Arn's an official army post now. To get in, you'll need an officer's pass. By tradition, an Arn bears staff and talisman to battle. My brother bore them in Oriator's stand and died of his wounds three days after. Only I left them in Dove Arn when I gave it to the army. Goodness only knows where they are, or what shape they're in now. Arn family history's riddled with this cursed war. My father and brothers have done so much for the cause, I shouldn't have to lift a finger. Well, you need to get into Dove Arn. For that, you'll need an officer's pass. You might steal, uh, I mean borrow one. 
or get hold of a forgery, Mooncamp might be good for that. Aye, glad to see someone else who isn't a lily giglet. Mooncamp's as much as a mummer's farce as it is a traveller camp. Eh? Eh, she seems like a talented enough woman, but she's soft-headed for that damned Hierophant. I heard about her leaving Irian. Maybe the time away from the old seer will give her some clear thought, for once. Mooncamp is fine. I mean, it seems all the travellers would rather rob a noblewoman's rouge than a purse, but I'm not judging. The leadership here does lap up the words of the Hierophant, though, like a bunch of mangy curs looking for a morsel. A great traveller's name is on the lips of every tavern maid given enough time. They're the ones with true legacy. A thief may turn a lock, a brigand steal a key, but a bard can steal your heart for but a little fee. This camp is home to bards and singers all, tumblers and jugglers and curtain calls. The unknown provider, the stalwart seer, the anonymous guider, the brigands dear, a diviner of our quarry and a swager of our worries. A sullied order, the untouched cast, but rest assured we shall outlast Live on your feet, as we are told, while using hand to steal the gold. Someone off the road. Tell me, do you have any peasant clothes that you're looking to get rid of? I can pay you for them. Mare might have been co-leader of the camp, but she's no performer. She's a thief, through and through. It might have worn on her to be surrounded with folk like us. Guess it just wasn't a good fit. I used to find good work in Rathir, but the travellers here have a real passion for the art of performance. I'm happier here. Their words are often in the ears of common folk, and their songs play in the hearts of all. Indeed. It is not clothes so much as cloth. I'm a tailor by trade, and from my hands are born the costumes and curtains of our fair camp. But the players of our camp are always in need of new articles of dress. I need lots of material. And quickly. Bring me some peasant clothes and I can rework the material with relative ease. What say you? You mean truly? It's been a while since I've had any good material to work with. I await your findings. If I knew, I wouldn't need you around to find them for me, would I? I think if you poke around, you'll dig some up. What is this specimen before me? I can only think that you were the skilled one the Hierophant said I was to expect. If only you had come sooner, then you might have helped to keep my mare's heart here. May the Hierophant's gaze find my wife, for what a wretch I have become! I am more like a king of ants than anything else. There is nothing I can say to describe how I pine for her. Would that I be sundered like the Rathir battlefield, that I could escape this anguish. The Hierophant directs all of the travelers, a director of our cues and exits, of our motivations and actions. It is well known that the Hierophant commands us because of a vision of the work from start to end, a prophecy to tell us what to steal. It takes a brave sword to be a traveler. We've all left something behind, or made the sacrifices we had to, or had nowhere else to turn. But more than that, a traveler needs presence. We need to command attention to perform under spotlight, even from the shadows. Oh, nothing I should be bothering you with. After all you've accomplished in Star Camp, what's so special about a broken-hearted Alpha? I should tell you more about what mission you're to be. Oh, you must give me a moment. Mare, my poor lovely Mare. My Queen of Cups, the once joint leader of Moon Camp, my wife. Happy we were in the years we were wed, yet sad we were in the hours. She was of a noble family, and I their jester. We fell in love, eloped, and joined the only ones who did not shun our love, the Travelers. But of late, the stress of this life has finally taken its toll. She left me and this camp, to seek refuge in the Temple of Lyria. I... 
I'm in no state to be aiding you right now. I should be alone. I still need some time. Very well. Go to the Hierophant Shrine and pray. There you will receive portents of the next mission from our Grand Leader. You must pray at the Hierophant Shrine. There you will divine the targets of your thefts. Is there a petition before me? Ah, yes, but it is strange. You seem cloaked in shadow, hidden from my gaze. Ah, it is you, Shade. We are far from the woods of Dalentarth. I see you are eager to serve your guide. Yes, and come far from Star Camp. Moon Camp is a home to true travelers, faithful and talented. I have seen the items which you must steal. The Chalice of Forced Vintage from the Lower City, and the Signet Ring of Wyvern Gift from the Upper City. And lastly, you must steal the Cowl of the Maiden from the Temple of Lyria. These treasures are my blessing to this camp. The Chalice of Forced Vintage is said to take any liquid poured into it and transform it into fine wine. It is currently in possession of a peddler named Weinrich in Rathir's Seafoam Tavern. Relieve it of him. It is the signet ring of the Wyvern Gifts, one of the great houses of Rathir. The Patriarch Ebsel is a social man. You will have to take the ring from him away from prying eyes. The Cowl of the Maiden is a ceremonial cowl belonging to the Temple of Lyria. It is only worn on solemn occasions of the lunar eclipse. I fear that you are not its only predator. Mayor Ganon seeks the cowl as well. You are not the only thief that is pursuing the Cowl of the Maiden. There is also Mayor Ganon, formerly of Moon Camp. The calamities of Irian's and Mare's relationships are not unknown to me. Resolve them and you may have an easier time. <laughs>